Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always, I am your host Brett Murphy and for today's video I have another brand new ranking for you all and I am going to be ranking all nine of director Quentin Tarantino's movies. So it's actually been a few years since we last got a Tarantino movie. I think it was the summer of 2019 actually. And as of right now, the recording of this particular video, there has been no recent news about when or if we're ever going to get a another one. Between those two items and the fact that we've kind of hit a low point in the year right now where there's no big new releases, and also the fact that my original version of this video was indeed copyright claimed a little while ago, I don't exactly remember when, meaning that it's actually blocked in some territory so not everyone can see it, I figured I should take this opportunity to update my ranking for one of my all-time favorite directors. I also wanted to make this one last little note, and that is the fact that there is actually a bit of a discrepancy with just how many movies Tarantino actually has. But if you remember from the trailer for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, it did indeed say the ninth film by Quentin Tarantino, or something along those lines, meaning that they believe Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is his ninth movie, which means for this list, and I guess in Tarantino's own mind, Kill Bill is seen as just one movie and not two volumes. Fun fact for those of you who might not know, it was originally written and directed and shot as one full movie. However, it was a super long movie and the studio was not cool with releasing it all at once, so Tarantino and the studio came to terms and released it as Kill Bill Volume 1 and Kill Bill Volume 2. But I'm going to be honoring the director's vision in this video and counting Kill Bill as just one movie. Before I hop into the actual ranking itself, I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my ranking videos, so be sure to check that out and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Number 9. Death Proof I truly do honestly believe that Tarantino hasn't made a single bad movie, not even really a good movie, all of them are great or better. But for me personally, Death Proof is by far the most mixed bag of his entire filmography. It's got many long drawn out scenes of dialogue, which is yes of course a Tarantino trademark, and it does feel very genuine and authentic in this movie because of the performances, however I just don't find anything that they say to be all that interesting. At least for the first half of the movie because that second group of girls is far more interesting. However, the true standout of this movie is in fact Kurt Russell, who can start off very charming and charismatic, and then with a simple flip of the switch he becomes undeniably terrifying and just an absolute menace. I do want to add though that the ending of this movie still very much so has me split. On the one hand it is just as chaotic and absurd as the rest of the movie, but on the other hand it just feels a bit too silly and abrupt. Number 8. Jackie Brown this is probably Tarantino's most plain movie. It's a story you've probably seen a million times over. It's actually quite simple, which is a little surprising when it comes to Tarantino because he's not really known for keeping things simple. The story just sort of kind of plays out like your generic double-crossing heist type of movie. But thankfully, almost every other Tarantino trademark is present here. Pam Greer and Robert Forrester steal the show. And of course, Samuel L. Jackson and Robert De Niro are no slouches either. Despite its more basic story, Jackie Brown is a hell of a time, and it seems as the years go on, more and more audiences are really starting to take to it and appreciate it like they should have from the start. Number 7. The Hateful Eight among the many things that Tarantino is well known for, making ridiculously long movies is chief among them. However, I feel that this is the only one where you actually start to feel that runtime a little bit. The theatrical version of this movie is already almost three hours long, and somehow there is actually an extended cut too. Unfortunately, at times it can be a little slow and draggy. However, it does definitely have the more interesting characters than the last two movies I just mentioned. And it also boasts sharp and witty dialogue and some unexpected twists and turns that save it from that last place spot. Number 6. Kill Bill 
Oddly enough, one of the things that has always stood out the most to me when it comes to this movie or these two volumes, whichever way you prefer to see it as, is its surprisingly well-executed down-to-earth moments. But don't get me wrong, what you really come to this movie for, at least most people anyway, and it's definitely in here, is the fact that it is loaded with bloody, over-the-top, hyper-stylized samurai action. It's got beautiful cinematography, some well-timed comedy, and a plethora of old martial arts movie tropes. From start to finish, it is pulse-pounding, adrenaline-fueled, revenge-filled fun. Number 5. Reservoir Dogs this is easily one of the most expertly crafted and masterfully directed whodunits of all time. It is a simple, low-budget crime thriller about a jewelry heist gone wrong and the surviving crooks turning on one another to try and figure out who was the snitch. Despite only releasing in the 90s, it is a timeless classic that just becomes all the more impressive when you realize that it was Tarantino's first shot at the mainstream. Number 4. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood Despite what you might think and what the trailers might have led you to believe, this is in actuality a wonderful story about a friendship between a washed up actor and his longtime stuntman trying to make a comeback in 60s Hollywood. Of course, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio deliver top tier performances, but it's actually Brad Pitt who kind of steals the show here. It boasts magnificent costume and set design that really makes you feel like you've just been transported back to the 60s. It's loaded to the the brim with laugh out loud humor and an insanely bonkers ending. However, I do always like to point out with this one that I feel Margot Robbie was severely underutilized and it doesn't tie into the whole Manson family murders anywhere near as much as the trailers would make you think. Despite those couple of negatives though, this ends up being one of the most original and heartfelt movies in recent memory. Number 3. Inglorious Bastards Fun fact, when I first saw this movie, admittedly I was way too young to be watching it because it was like when it was brand new in 2009 or whatever, I didn't care for it at all. In fact, I kind of hated this movie for years. However, as I got a little bit older and I wisened up, at least a touch anyway, I decided to give this one a rewatch with a fresh set of eyes and I fell madly head over heels in love with it. We primarily follow Brad Pitt's Lieutenant Aldo Rain and his group of Jewish Nazi hunters badasses as they travel across France attempting to assassinate high-ranking Nazi officers in order to bring the war to an end. It is a mix of brutal, visceral World War II action and the smoothest of dark humor. With phenomenal performances from Brad Pitt, Michael Fassbender, Melanie Laurent, and of course Christoph Waltz as our main villain, Hans Landa, which is by far one of the best performances and easily among the best villains of the 21st century. In the end, this one turns out to be one of the most bloody magnificent, oddly funny, and supremely memorable movies of the last few decades. Number 2. Pulp Fiction this is one of the most iconic and well-received movies of all time, and for good reason. Whether it's its memeable moments, like John Travolta wandering around not really knowing what to do, its memorable lines, like, well, basically anything that comes out of Samuel L. Jackson's mouth, or unforgettable scenes, like every other scene in the movie, for good or for bad, because, you know, you get some kind of disturbing stuff with Bruce Willis and Ving Rhames, but then you also get some great stuff like the dance numbers with Uma Thurman. This story of intertwining tales of criminals is in fact a masterpiece. Number 1. Django Unchained this one to me personally is pure perfection. Not only is it my favorite Tarantino movie, but as of right now, it is my favorite movie of all time. I really do believe we get career high performances from the entire cast. Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, Leonardo DiCaprio, Kerry Washington, Samuel L. Jackson, and honestly everybody else involved could be included on that list as well. It delivers raw, unflinching violence that puts you right into the heart of this period piece. It's also got some appropriately uncomfortable subject matter to match the time and location and tale. It's got fast, smart dialogue, a few sly and cunning jokes, and its fair share of twists, turns, heart, and hope. 
To me personally, this is a movie unlike any other. So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my ranking. While you're at it, feel free to let me know how you would rank all nine of director Quentin Tarantino's movies. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more content, consider subscribing to my channel and ringing that little bell icon. That way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. And that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you. And while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.